let's talk about muscle contraction. Um, let, let's first go back to our, our structure of a muscle fiber or muscle cell. Um, and remember that it is a cell and it is covered by the connective tissue layer called the endomysium. And then, you know, because it is a cell, it has a plasma membrane called the sarcolemma, which is this blue line here surrounding it. And it's made up of bundles of myofilaments. All right, and the myofilaments have repeating units called sarcomeres in them. Okay. Um, going back to the muscle fiber or muscle cell, there are structures called T-tubules, which are invaginations of the sarcolemma. So the sarcolemma, the plasma membrane, will kind of dip inward into the inner part of the muscle fiber. And those are called T-tubules. Now also within this muscle fiber, muscle cell, it's got mitochondria, it's got endoplasmic reticulum, but the endoplasmic reticulum in a muscle cell is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So SR abbreviated for sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarco means muscle. And it's this structure that stores and will eventually release calcium ions uh, for muscle contraction. All right, now that we have our parts, let's go ahead and take a little closer look at the, um, at the thin and thick filaments. Remember, the sarcomere here is made up, you know, or the myofilaments made up of repeating units of sarcomeres. So the sarcomere is made up of thick and thin filaments, myofilaments, and the thick myofilament I think they just call it a filament. And then the thin filament or myofilament there. I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, and the thick filament is made up of the protein myosin. And here's like one myosin molecule. It's got this little expanded region called the head. All right, and so you get a bunch of myosin molecules in bundles to form the thick filament. The thin filament, however, is made up of three components, the protein actin, uh, a little structure, a complex um, called troponin, and then a rope-like structure, protein called tropomyosin. All right, so here we have our thin filaments, and each thin filament is made up of these components. So let's take a look at what happens when we contract our muscles, or how do we contract our muscles. First of all, we have to tell our muscles to contract. Remember, skeletal muscle is voluntary. So we tell it via um, or by means of a nerve, okay, or a neuron. So we send electrical impulses down our nerves, all right, to those particular muscles we want to contract. All right, at the end of the nerve, uh, it will release neurotransmitters acetylcholine, which will travel across the synapse of the space to the muscle membrane. Okay, this, that whole structure is called the neuromuscular junction. So once those um, neurotransmitters, those chemical messengers, travel across to the muscle membrane, the sarcolemma, it will bind to the sarcolemma, causing a continuation of that electrical impulse along the sarcolemma. Okay, so the electrical impulse travels along the sarcolemma and makes its way down into the T-tubules. Right? When that action potential or that electrical impulse dips into the T-tubules, it causes the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release its stored calcium ions. Okay? Now those calcium ions then will diffuse in amongst all these, um, these myofilaments and that cal those calcium ions will bind to the troponin. Now, normally, when you're not contracting your muscles, the tropomyosin, this rope-like structure, is covering little areas on the actin that will allow the myosin heads to attach. So when we're not contracting our muscles, the tropomyosin covers the binding sites. But once the calcium binds to the troponin, okay, so it's going to bind to the troponin, it causes a, a change in the molecule. 
And by doing that, it causes this tropomyosin to move and open up or expose those binding sites. So now the myosin heads can bind to the actin. So again, without the calcium, the tropomyosin blocks the binding of the myosin. Once calcium binds to it, it causes movement or shifting of this tropomyosin. So now the myosin heads can bind. So what happens now? We have the binding of the myosin heads. And I'm going to kind of extend it out here. So now, with calcium present, we bind our heads to the actin. All right. With ATP, the myosin causes the ATP causes the myosin heads to swivel or to move, and so they're going to move this way, and moves the um, thin filaments in toward the center of the sarcomere, so like this. So all those myosin heads are going to swivel and move this way inward and pull those thin filaments inward toward the center. So if this is my thin filament, here's my myosin. Now the calcium binds and now the myosin head can attach. ATP causes the movement of that myosin head and it pulls that thin filament in toward the center and shortens the muscle. And there you have a contraction. Right? So when we, we stop, we don't want to contract our muscle anymore. We stop electrical impulses from, from going to the muscle. The calcium then is taken back up into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium detaches here. The tropomyosin goes back to cover. The myosin heads detach. And by the way, the myosin head detaching also takes ATP to do that. And, um, and then you, the uh, muscle relaxes and the thin and thick filaments go back to their resting position. All right. Um, when you die, you run out of ATP, and so your myosin heads can no longer swivel, or they can't detach. So they're kind of stuck in a position, and that's called rigor mortis. All right, hopefully that was clear.